Um, my dad was, uh, was both my parents actually come from Eastern Europe, but my dad is more notable because he kind of came from a essentially a dumpy old town, I think called the Shtetl. And in the Shtetl, there were um, sometimes raving bands of people on horseback that would rape, pillage, and burn. And many times in the name of Jesus, they did this. And that was what happened to him, that my dad saw, my dad saw his mother, these people came into town, he ran into a field, he looked back and saw the town burned down, and his mom raped and then killed him. And he was four. And then brought that down through the generation, um, which uh, basically affected me heavily. It, it all had to do with sexualized violence and how that, uh, and, and what happened to me as a result. Just as a side note, I have a cousin whose dad was in Buchenwald as a teenager, it's a German concentration camp, and there was violence that descended through his family as well. Um, and his, my cousin's kid, that would be the grandfather who was in Buchenwald. To this day, he has dreams, uh, nightmares about ultra violence. So, I mean, this stuff happened. But that's not why I'm, I'm here. I'm here to try to explain that that's where I come from. But meanwhile, I, you know, fast forward a million years, I got, I got seriously sidetracked because of envy um, and it had to do with a family member and went way off base. And I mean, I was amazed at how deluded I, I had become. And I was led to, led to Christianity because of the notion of, of uh, grace, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that we're saved by grace because that's the only way I could become not deluded, was by grace. Um, and the only other thing I want to say about this is that I, I, most everything, I'll be more free to admit that most, most of all of the tenets of Christianity are all things I wrestle with. So that I, I am not the sort of person who says, oh yeah, this stuff just comes naturally. And, you know, but I'll tell you the ones I, I do buy. It. The, the notion of grace by faith. Um, the notion that Jesus is the Messiah of the Jews and the Jews missed it. And compressing a big long story to be very short, the way I got to that was I thought the smoking gun was how about Jesus was how Jesus is viewed upon by modern Jews. That I, he's, he's not, I think at minimum, messiahship aside, that whether you think he's the messiah or not, that Jesus is amongst the greatest of all the Jews, but that's not how Jesus is portrayed and not how he's treated. Um, so I think that was the smoking gun. The, the issue about Jesus, about what, whether he was a complete crazed fanatic, I mean, it, or he actually was the person that he claimed. I, I didn't make that one up. I think C.S. Lewis made that one up. But I, but I subscribe to it. And there's a third alternative with Jesus, which is, I've heard, which is he just didn't exist the whole time. So very I don't know, but I would tend to think that if the whole thing was a fairy tale, someone would have outed that by now. I mean, it somehow would have not caught on in the way it has. But all the other stuff I do wrestle with, I wrestle with original sin, even though I think there's redemption by grace. I wrestle with the Jesus is the one way. Uh, that's when I really struggle. 
just put it out there. Um, but I don't. I guess I don't struggle with what I call the, the culture of Christendom because I didn't grow up in it. I see so many people that I kind of think of as recovering, recovering Christians. You know, they they had strange family histories with it. And I just have a strange Jewish family. <laughs> so, anyway, that's my story.